This right here is all the right people. people. All the right people. All the right people is perfect title for this. Aaron Lip, Reed Grimm, Colin Hauser, y'all. Cassie, <laughs> Mr. Tom Bridwell, Adam Pickerel, Rob Fraboni, Cass Haley, and you. This was not scripted. Love it. We're doing it. We need a rooster count off. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening today to the Big Hope Podcast. We have a special guest for the All the Right People series where we're taking a look at this new album that we've been recording. This new album, All the Right People, and what that actually means. Today, I'm honored to have one of my, you know, one of my only mentors that I've had for a long-term kind of situation and and, and friend and just an, an amazing music producer, music engineer. Um, this man has worked with everybody from... You know, Bob Dylan to the band to the Rolling Stones, and it just the list goes on and on. Joe Cocker, uh, he was involved with you know Chris Blackwell Island Records, the whole Bob Marley sort of catalog, and it just keeps on going and going and going and going and going, and it's truly, truly an honor to be sitting here at the farm just north of Novice with Mister Rob Froboni. Well, it is my honor and pleasure to be here i mean you know you fit right in with that group of people which is good <laughs> all the right people are here right so uh yeah it's a fantastic thing that after all these years we got to finally land where we've been trying to get right and yeah, it's it's yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty magical thing because you know we're 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 in a rural area in northeast texas right and it's so ironic here i am singer-songwriter from a rural area, Northeast Texas, right outside of Paris, Texas. And one day, about ah, about 10 years ago. More, more even. Yeah, 10, more 12, like 12, 10, 10, 12 yeah. years ago, maybe right. 13 years ago, I get a call. And it, this guy named Jim Slayton, who owned this ranch and just started building a studio, said, hey, uh, I got someone in town I want you to meet. And I go travel down to this ranch and show up and... There, Mr. Rob Ferboni is, and I, I, I'll never forget. Jim's like Jim. Jim wanted me to play him a song, right? And right. so I, I played you a song, and you know, Rob sitting there, he's listening, he's smiling, you know, he's sort of just say, okay, okay. And the first thing, well, at least my memory of what you said that day, which what I took from it, whether or not you actually said this, you're right. like, yeah, 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 you know, you, you're a great singer and all, you know, you might be too good is what you said. I remember like that. I was like, yeah. too good. What does he mean by that? He's yeah. like, you know, this could actually be too good. And he's like, Cassie's like, you know, one of the greatest lessons, this is you saying, one of the greatest lessons uh, that I've learned from this whole thing is like, um, it's really not about how good you are or about, about talent, about talent saying, or anything. Yeah. It's like, right. he goes, you know, I don't know who told you this or how you learned this. You, I think you, I remember you saying it from somebody that, you know, what transcends on a record and what transcends is about, is the way that the artist is feeling while they're performing it. Right. Not the actual thing coming out, but like not the actual notes. It's it's how they're feeling about those of notes. Of course, conveying, act, conveying the emotion, right? But the other great one is Chris Blackwell's one, which is uh, it's all, it's not about ta talent. It's about image, attitude, and songs, right? In, and not necessarily in that order. But if you think about it, it's really true. So because it's it's one thing to be really talented, but not have a great vehicle for your talent. Say you're not a great songwriter, or you don't have any access to the kind of songs you want. You've fortunately got it all wrapped up into a nice package. Yeah, including your wife now. Yeah, is, <laughs> dude, she's the she's the deterrent. She's the 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 the, the magic well, uh, pixie great. dust. That's she's really the special. thing that really makes it happen. Well, that doesn't always happen, you know. There's, I mean, I can you can think of like a handful of people in history where that was where that worked like that, and it, that's been very successful. It's great, but anyway, it's just wonderful to be here. So, what was the first? Let me ask you this: What do you remember about the day we met? Well, I remember. I remember like afterwards, right? I remember meeting you and I do remember the conversation and the thing about too good because I, you know, I get a little scared of that. I mean, where, you know, you, when people, it depends how the people feel about their talent. If they think that that's the end all be all and they have nothing to worry about after that or nothing to think about, let's say not worry. 
Um, that's one thing, but if they're realistic about things, then it helps, right? So I just figured to toss that out there. You've gone down that road 100% because you're, you're evolving as, as an artist. Now, it's, the singing part is, is so easy for you, it seems like, right? But whether it is or not, it seems like it is. And then the other part is, it's a little trickier, you know, the songwriting and just get, you know, the whole other aspects Almost of having reali- a music career. Realizing who you're, who, realizing who you are as an artist. I think exactly. that's exactly that, what you have to say. Yeah. Right? Like that you reali- yeah. realizing the meaning of what your right. art is and the function of it. Yeah. And, and the thing is that you, it's a question of connecting with people that like people you might say, and sort of uplifting them. In other words, you, there's an audience out there for you that you know, one of one of those audiences is just purely musical and it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are or anything like that. Then there's another aspect where people identify with people in a similar situation to them or that they feel like, you know, you're not some untouchable, like you're some guy that grew up on a farm and did all this and actually got to where you got. And it's a very hopeful story where some people seem like they were dropped off by the gods and you know, right. on parachutes. And some are. Well, and some right? are kind of. I mean, of. some, some guys. Yeah, some, yeah, some no, are, it happens. Some are, or, I mean, they just, they're born into it. No, you're it's right. It's like a family business. But this has grown into a beautiful thing. And then, you know, the other great thing is just all the stuff that we've talked about over the years about everything from the stuff we're talking about now to equipment and recording and so let's all go, of that. So let's, let's, let's pause and go back to... How our relationship? Oh yes. Yeah. So I was saying how it affected me that day. I, so I, I, I remember. Let's go back. No, it's all good. Yeah. We're going back to that. That first time we met, Jim uh, was the factor. Was like how we met. And yeah, so Jim what? The, what the yeah. plan was? At, I didn't know, but Jim sort of started thinking. He's like, I'm thinking about putting Cass and Rob together and possibly yeah. funding an album where right. Rob is is going to be producing the record. And and so we planned a trip yep. to your house. And things to, are kind of moving in that direction. Yeah, you guys came over. I remember. I remember you one that of the bottle first, of tequila. Yeah, right? yeah. It was it with you had you and you had like the coffee. Was that you that had the coffee tequila? Yeah, or was yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I got um, that for him. So yeah. I remember showing up at Rob's house, and the first thing that I saw on the door was an ohm symbol. It was like a little rock that you yeah, had, like an ohm right, symbol. That's right. Still and, there, uh, yeah. uh, I, you know, I just knew because I, I, I had, I had looked up his discography, but I just knew that you know he, this there was going to be more there yeah. as far as our our you know interest and our mentality and stuff and right right uh so we 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 stayed for a weekend in Connecticut at your house yeah. I think we we're going to you know start this album process right right next thing we know Jim dies that's it we were headed in that direction and then Jim died and then you know so that s- specific it wasn't meant to happen right then, obviously. But anyway, it didn't. But we stayed in touch, and it's developed over. You know, I mixed the one record yeah, for you, yeah. right? Well, Mastered I sort of felt like you. What I, what I, what my whole, just to, my whole idea of the whole thing was, I was trying to get as much information about how to to do this, like right. how to, yeah. you know, and and Rob at first reluctantly, he's like. You know, these are like sort of trade secrets, Cass. I don't know if I want to tell you how I've been doing all this stuff. I even think he said that a couple of times. He's like, you know, you know, usually I'd be paid to tell somebody what I'm doing here, yeah, Cass. Yeah. But, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so call after call and a question after question. And after a few years of us really talking back and forth, I think that I finally won his heart over. Well, yeah. Where he's like, man. I'm just going to give this guy the master key. Well, you know what it is too, though, <laughs> was you, you weren't wasting my time. So in other words, I find that a lot. In other words, you could be interested peripherally in the recording stuff and all that kind of stuff, but you had, you were asking the right questions. You really kind of, it was genuine. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, and it wasn't some frivolous thing where you're trying to be cool and learning certain, you were like serious about it. And so well, that, you know, I picked up on that right away, and I figured it's kind of an interesting thing to do at a distance like this. So, you know, we did our little thing, and then you finally came, and we mixed together. But we've always kind of, you've recorded stuff, played it for me. I've made my comments. You've done Yeah, and you, I mean, a lot of the stuff, you t- straight up, you didn't really like it all that much as yeah, far as the way it was recording. It. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it was one of those things where it's like, it's sort of like teacher and, and, and pupil of like me, like, you know, uh, learning different techniques and learning and the, the whole inspiration behind me wanting to sort of crack the code, the Fraboni code or whatever was, yeah. was, was your intention 
and you, it seemed like your intention with recording and music was in such a pure place of wanting it to have the most power that it could. Emotional power. The most, the, and yeah. I, I really feel like that that's the I purpose agree. of what we're doing. And right, I think that's right. the servitude that songwriters and performers um, have is, is, is by creating that bridge from the super sensible to the sensible so that we can navigate our emotions and so that other people can realize that they're not alone in feeling these things. Yeah. You and, know, and, you're and right. I, I felt it really deeply with you and your method and, and the recordings going through the library of the stuff that you've put your hands on and been, been a part of helping create. I just always sensed there was something there. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it just was, it was it's really, good. really uh, like this magical, mysterious sort of pursuit of being able to try to capture uh, who who I who my spirit is, who right. my soul is, and right. for my children's children's children, for them to be able to listen to a record yeah. and say, that's my grandpa. And for it to be a real representation of the moment in time. And I knew that er that, that that was your thing. That Yeah, that is my thing. And the thing that's really interesting about it is that, you know, the, the way this has gone back and forth in the sense that, like, in the last couple of days when you've been singing and to realize that, that you are able to understand the, the mechanics of singing so well, like, you know, all the little descriptive things you're saying about if, whether you're singing in the back of your throat or the front of your mouth, all that sort of stuff. You're the first person I've ever met that's an actual sing a performer and an artist that knows this stuff. And, um, and I, it's really fascinating to watch. And I, the thing that fascinates me the most is for somebody so intelligent and eloquent as you that you can calm down long enough to play a song is amazing. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know, I know. Because right? you're... I, you're so full of, you know, couple, you're like this big explosion at all times, kind of, and in a good way. But I'm just saying the fact you're able to draw that in and like focus it into this music is really powerful. I mean, you're different than a lot of people that I've worked with in that respect. It's it's good. It's it's a great thing. You know, it's unique. And that was also part of the thing what attracted me to you is this that you're like a. Um, it's a lo it's going the distance with you. It's not like you meet somebody and hi and bye and whatever it is, even if it lasts for a year. This is like we, we've been going the distance. Yeah, and, we've been putting. And they don't been, stop been us been now. Emotionally investing in this. Totally, and, and, and that yeah. goes into the whole the whole concept of all the right people of like, man, you know, there's something really, really magical when you can develop a friendship. You can. Be proactive and sort of mindful enough to actually be aware of the balance of the relationship, so right. that it doesn't get out of out of whack, right, out of balance. Right. That's a good point. That's I mean, I mean, and I think that that's a big part of this whole thing of like, you know, we've we've both managed this relationship in a good way. I think so. And it's 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 and that's what's that's well that's why they that's why relationships last. No, exactly. You know what I mean? And no, it's and true. it's also what makes them really powerful too is when two people are able to communicate openly and clearly. And be honest without totally having to without hold thinking, back. Yeah, thinking that yeah. this person's Oh I can't take that. Yeah, I can't say that because you can't take it. That doesn't exist well, in take, our relationship. No, it can't. It, no, it can't. You know, and I, I think um <laughs> I think that's a really powerful thing that totally. sort of led to this actually being able to be possible. Well, it makes you so much more comfortable. I mean, the more, the less mental noise you can get out of the way and emotional noise, the better off you are when you're recording and making music, let's face it. I mean, so there's a lot of clarity here. And fortunately, with the people that you chose, that this mindset is permeates this whole group, which is fantastic. I mean, that's part of the thing that's really fascinating about this is that it's there always seems to be one kind of odd man out and, 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 but this doesn't seem to have happened here so far. Maybe that person didn't show up or something, right? but, 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 but uh, anyway, it's been a really interesting thing from that point of view. And also the, the way the, the amount of love that's been put into this from everybody's perspective, no matter if it be Colin in shooting the thing, if it be the musician, whatever it is, everybody, Tom, everyone, Michael, it's all fantastic. I mean, that really is contributing to the power of this thing. Without it, because we couldn't sit around and figure out how to do this. I mean, we're just kind of letting it happen. It's making itself totally. in a certain way. You're definitely keeping the train on the rails. You know, the, you know that's for sure, which is great. <clears throat> and also, the other thing that I have to say is that there's a beauty in being able to do something like this where 
where the artist is, where it's so easy, like the singing and all the rest of it. It's, you know, sometimes that can be so neurotic. It's like, you know, you cut a bunch of songs and then everybody's like, oh my God, we're going to have to do vocals and oh my God, now what's going to happen? And there's none of that here, which is just like the most incredible thing. And that's really different and unusual. So I'm really grateful for that. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad, you know, <clears throat> I'm glad that you were attracted to, I mean, you sort of specialize in, in building studios out and in in places that aren't you always say you hate studios yeah right you know and and i've i've i recorded my last album here at the house right. by myself right with some of your guidance but uh -huh. really just sort of going out like a renegade shooting from the hip and just sure. trying out um and i was so excited that you were like you preferred this situation right right versus going into some you know super controlled stagnant studio where you're on the clock it's like these kind of things. There was an era that that happened, you know, that that where this all changed. I mean, in the, like say Gold Star, which was you know on Santa Monica and Vine years ago, where Phil Spector worked and the Beach Boys and all these people. Those studios that were built at that time were they were like this in the sense they were sort of like a glorified music room or living room or whatever. You know what I mean? There weren't like some acoustician's dream and like some. <laughs> <clears throat> crazy shit that had nothing to do with anything. They were just this cool place. Well, that all changed when the record plant opened in, in uh, I guess it was 67 or 8 in Los Angeles. And this was the very first studio that took this other approach to designing studios and made it like just everything was just times 10. You know, the, the monitors were like, everything sounded 10 times better than... It actually it, sounded. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, well, that's what worried me because I was saying to this friend of mine the first time we went there and... And I and I we set up a bunch of mics on things, and then we we were pushing up the mics on the monitors. And I said, "Shit, you know, there's got to be a problem here." I said, "Every one of these mics sounds good." I said, "It's it, there's no kind of differentiation. It's hard to tell, you know." And and that's when you start to realize about how you know that experience that you have of that nature, where you're getting blown away by listening or whatever. That should be happening at home in your home theater or your playback system not in the studio right i mean right you i mean you, it's trying to stay calm and just stay on the beam in the studio that can be so hard you know you you can get so the energy can get can carry you away and you have to kind of just keep calm and like keep a perspective and sound wise that's really important and home sort of can do that for you too home so, can bring you back to like yeah. a, a neutral space to yeah. where you're not like in studio well yeah and you're not fighting for ground zero at home you start at ground zero in the other studios you're fighting to bring it up to what this is just when it starts right you're you're having to kind of clear away a bunch of crap to get to a certain place and then you're trying to get above that well here we've just gone up right this is really kind of the unique thing about this place is that this is the best of all the places I've ever done, which is probably about the 12th or 13th one. Um, this is the best one ever. So what are room. some, what are some different artists that are similar to the situation where you built out studios in, in odd sort of places well, to create the first, I mean, the first one, the first one was my own when I was young, you know, when I was in my teens, I built, put a studio together. So, I did that and I made that work and then I went from there and I worked in a professional studio and uh, I got a taste of what that was in New York when I was in my early teens, in my late teens I mean. And then then I came back to the Village Recorder and then, okay, so that was a regular studio. And then from there, okay, so the first one really, were, and of all ones to be the first one, was the band, right? Because they were into that same philosophy. They didn't like studios and they, they recorded at Big Pink, which was a house and, and uh, a basement of a house and then so they wanted to build a studio you know and Robbie said to me you know Rick's found a house out in Malibu would you be interested in putting a studio together there and I said sure so that's really the first one that was on that scale I mean I did some stuff for some less so the one in Malibu what was that one called that was Shangri-La Shangri-La yeah that was in 1975 so that what was, albums were recorded at Shangri-La well the it was built to do Northern Light Southern Cross the band album and then uh the basement tapes thing came up afterwards and that was taking the tapes that were recorded in in uh Woodstock and uh going through them and compiling a record to be put out on Columbia. So we did that at Shangri-La, right? Then the last waltz was the, that was the big deal where we shot the footage there for the interviews and recorded the studio side of the record there, which was one side of six. And then uh, 
we mixed the live Last Waltz album at Shangri-La. And then uh, after that, they were ready to let it go. And myself and a, and a friend of mine, well, a guy that was their road manager and another friend of mine bought it from them because okay. all these people would come and visit Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, Van Morrison, you know, all these people come and visit. Oh, my God, what a great place. I'd love to record here. And yeah. I was like saying, Jesus, we, we got to get this. This is the same thing going people. on here. Yeah, it's the same thing. But this is even better than Shangri-La was when it started. You know, we we had to do a lot more work on the on the plane room. I mean, stuff like putting Indian tapestries on the ceiling and no, no big construction part things, yeah, just adding but just some... certain things. But this actually was pretty, you know, we didn't do much. I mean, we just found out what spots in the room worked and set the stuff up. We never moved anything. It's like, you know, we never adjusted anything. We put, never changed the microphone. It just was like... Which is funny because we thought we were going to have to. We thought we were going to have to totally. search the whole house, oh, right? Oh, totally. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality is like, wow. I just didn't know Tinkerbell was going to be the second engineer, you know? So. Right. <laughs> you had no doubt. Magic, huh? <laughs> this magic sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, how... If you had... Like how is how is the process? How are the songs affecting you? What do you what do you think about the mix of styles and like what do you think about this album? I well, mean, I no, I think the album is incredible. I think that it's it's a question of from my point of view, it's trying to just keep the focus of it. Like there's a thread for sure. Like there's different styles and different sounds, which is absolutely a great thing. And the thread is really strong. I mean, one of the reasons too is being what is that the, the core band. Well, you know the, th the what what. Like when something, when what every song has in common, that is not common, right? I right. Mean, and and it's nothing to do with how they sound or anything like that. There's a spirit in there, and a, and that sort of thread. And it's, it's the way the musicians are, kind of a a network or a brotherhood or a web of energy, and it and that goes from song to song. It carries through, right? So there's that, and then trying to figure out, like, I, I'm so deep inside of it now that I can't yet figure out, I got to step back even further to see which songs seem to be the best ones to put yeah. out there first and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, because yeah. you have certain opinions while you're doing it and certain things, you know how it is, like, you can, you can encounter something, be it a book or a movie or music or whatever, a meal, and, like, the, the first hit is so powerful and you're just like, whoa, you know. Well, the things that tend to stay with you longer are the ones where you gotta you gotta listen to them a few times, watch them a few times, you know, lean into them a bit. You know, they're not like plashing you the back subtle. in the chair, but you're, yeah. yeah, and and they they're like lap dogs, you Bro. know. I mean, and like and they yeah, and they they end up being your best friend, and that's how with songs it's like that too. See, there's a lot of these things to think about. So maybe so pick if, if you had to pick three of the songs that are resonating the most with you. On the album, what would those three songs be? Well, um, all the right people for sure. Um, one that we, one I know that we haven't recorded yet, but every road, right? That's I, I just that song got to me big time. Then uh, I would say, I mean, one of the songs is "Love's Been So Good to Me." Uh, that that really is stuck. There's others though too. See, there's too many. There's, I'm having a hard, <laughs> I'm having a hard time differentiating here. You know, I mean, there's some really fabulous things that happen, like songs when I heard the demos that I thought were, I, I didn't sleepers. think anything wasn't sleepers. yeah sleepers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the, they weren't like the most evident like best song, let's say or whatever it was. Yeah. But there's a number of those that have come on, out the other side and have actually become some of the most interesting ones like misunderstood is an example of that. And yeah, uh, I don't think you really, uh, I think you were misunderstood with misunderstood. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, no, I definitely didn't get everything. And I was not nearly as inside of it as you were, but all I'm saying is that to see the growth of some of those things and then seeing the notes that I made, now sometimes my notes were right on and we ended up doing exactly what I was hoping. Other times it was very different. Right. And, and I, how I perceived the song and the, what I thought we needed to do to it based on how I perceived it compared to what actually ended up happening and how it, it went beyond what I could have imagined. That's where I always, my thing about working with geniuses is that, or, or you know, the, pe the people who are the most talented is that you can never guess what they're going to do next. I mean, with a lot of people, you can. Like, you know, the, like when somebody's singing, you kind of can imagine what the next lick is going to be or whatever, or the timing of it or whatever it might be. But there are people that, 
you can't predict anything. And there's an element of that in you, which is fabulous. And yeah. I mean, it's much more subtle though. Like, cause you're, you're not guessing in any way. I mean, that's one thing that's a hundred percent evident, right? I mean, where a lot of people are, you're absolutely not guessing, right? So that's good and bad. I mean, in the sense that things tend to be more consistently the same and there's just little nuances that make things different. Well, that's more what's true with you, yeah. right? I mean, there, there's a, it's not like there's a drastic difference from one take to the next or things like that. But still, there's, it's up to me to kind of tune in and, and notice that. And, and it's cool. And you're doing it with the vocals, which is really cool. So anyway, so as far as it goes, I mean, we're going to, it's going to, it's, it's a funny thing that this illness has sprung up and all this craziness yeah, that's going we're on. Right. So we're getting, so just to bring you guys up to speed. We happen to be doing, recording this during the coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so what's happening too, is our whole schedule has shifted. So yeah. like we were scheduled to go mix right away, um, the, right away. Yeah. And yeah. that's all shifted and everybody's sort of going back home to be safe with their families right now. And we're sort of just putting the pause button for a minute. Yeah. The gods um, are controlling our yeah, moves, you know? I mean, I really believe that. I mean, this is meant to, I, my attitude was I was ready to go hunker down in Dallas or do whatever we had to do. I don't have any issues. I mean, I'm not trying to get home, but I felt like maybe there's a message in here. Like maybe this is what we're supposed to do. Right. And I'm feeling that. very Yeah. Strong. Yeah. I, I definitely. Think and that and that's really cool. It's, I mean, maybe it's convenient thinking, but at the same time, well, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, it is what we want it to be. Yeah. It is what we want it to be. <laughs> exactly. Whatever that is, you know, sorry people out there. We weren't trying to spread well, this virus. Well, or... <laughs> Rob, it, it, I, I just want to end this whole thing by yeah. saying, I love you. And I love I'm you so too. honored that you, made yourself available and came down here and shared your time with us oh, leaving man, my your family this has been and what, a blast. You're, what you're doing. And, and we just, I know I, I'm, if I'm speaking for everybody that was involved, everybody just is so excited about what we did and excited about the spirit you brought to the table and all the lessons that were learned right. and, and all the possibilities in our minds. We're just open to a whole different way of doing things, which right. is we're really grateful for you and for everything that you brought to the table. It's thank you so much. Oh, I'm and grateful too. I've got one last thing. And because we're a team, we become a team, which is really great. Go one ahead. last thing can be any word. This is just a fun thing. Three words for this experience album, three words, any, any three words. Okay, three words. And you can't um, think too hard. First thing comes to mind. No, no, okay. I mean, perfect is one, which is dangerous. <laughs> uh, um, um, That's two, perfect and dangerous. Fun. You got one more. Okay, I like it. That's it. Perfect, dangerous, fun. Those are true. Three, that's, <laughs> those, those are good. Yeah, yeah. So listen, I also have to add something for the hospitality side of things. I mean, this has been fantastic, you know, musically and all that stuff, it's, but also... These guys get points for, you know, room and board. I mean, the food and the lodging has been fantastic, you know. Cassie. So anyway, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that, too. She's not know? only the principal songwriter, inspiration behind everything that's and the happening. And the, how, and the home. She's and also the, the organic chef and that's been, chef. That's been yeah. rocking. And I just have to also add to that. Rob, the possibilities that he opened up for us is the possibility of the most amazing pasta and spaghetti the possibilities the possibilities yeah <laughs> so i'm gonna end it there thank you guys so much uh, for thank listening you. thank you uh next time we'll see you guys later all right bye-bye well. all right that was good